good morning everyone it's uh, it's a pleasant uh, um, time to see all of you good morning good morning um uh, we are at our last class for uh, in a wholeness a uh, welcome to the <clears throat> e learning students and for joining with us this far um before we just uh, continue and just um, uh start off with our lesson just a couple of um, uh, reminders of the assessment to complete the assessment for the e-learning students before the 30th of uh, April and for the online students before tomorrow. Uh, kindly ensure those of you who haven't done it, completed it, please ensure that you do it because your marks and grades um, are required for, uh, for a certificate. So please ensure that you get it done. <clears throat> okay. Um, so today we're, we're actually uh, just going to be dealing with a very small part and of um, of the rest of the whole uh, of emotional wholeness, and we're just focusing on um, the minister and what are some of the things that uh, a person who is in the ministry of deliverance and healing what is it that we need to keep in mind. Um, so it's a it's a quick, a really short. Uh, excerpt and maybe we'll just spend some time in prayer and uh, we can close um, so we may have just a, a one hour a short class um, especially if we don't do not have many students who's come in today so uh, we'll just get started and um, uh, I'm at uh, I'm, I'm at the very end of the lesson and uh, if you look at the last page of it it is it, it comes under an appendix called, which is the Deliverance Minister. So through this entire course, um, you know, there have been many things that we have looked into. We looked, we started off with understanding the problems of the soul. Um, we looked into what were some of the causative factors. We looked into the basis for our healing and our deliverance how do we receive this healing and deliverance how we can continue to journey into wholeness and stay emotionally whole and as a result of staying emotionally whole we spoke about how uh, the battlefield the mind is a battlefield and how we can um, stay uh, conquering those things that are brought about by our own mind how do we uh, crucify the flesh and we looked specifically at uh, four aspects of our fleshly natures or our fleshly selves and what are things we can do to come to a place of dying to ourselves and lastly is uh, li uh, uh, having a renewed mind and what do we actively do to stay with a renewed mind. We also the last week we did look at uh, mental illnesses as a whole and uh, how we can go about what our responsibilities are as a minister to to help minister those who may be mentally ill and what are also some practical aspects that and general uh, aspects that we also need to keep in mind as we minister or as we are in um, communication with those who may have a mental illness so today we're just going to um, end it with a few few um, uh, caution points for a, for a deliverance minister. And um, uh, what is it that we need to keep aware of? So even as we embark on this topic, remember being a minister um, is a calling that each one of us have. It's not something that is only reserved to someone who has done their theological studies or, or is a pastor or, you know, within a position of spiritual leadership. Um, the commission is for all of us to come to a place to bring about signs and miracles, bring about healing and deliverance in the name of Jesus. So we are all called for for that. So remember, this is just a topic for each one of us and not just those of us who are in ministry. Even if you are in, in the world doing a job, 
or as part of an institution, maybe as a as any other uh, skill or a profession that you belong to, you know, you're you are equipped by the power of the Holy Spirit uh, and the name of uh, and by the Word of God, the authority that's given to you to bring about healing and deliverance. So this is a topic for each one of us and not just for a special few. Okay. So the first and important thing is to ensure that as a minister, um, you know, all the previous chapters that we spoke about is a place of being in a, in a place of wholeness, right? Um, uh, not just spiritual wholeness, but even the wholeness in our emotions. So as a minister, we ensure that we keep ourselves healthy uh, in all aspects of it, in spiritually, emotionally, as well as physically. And uh, we've gone through how that can be done. How can we continue walking in wholeness and continue staying in emotional wholeness? And we brought about very many aspects of it, about standing on the word of God, about uh, renewing our minds, about um, uh, 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 resisting the enemy, uh, and so on and so forth. There, are, there were many, many times that we've actually repeated a lot of, of what we are called to walk in and how we can be healthy. So as we minister, we need to ensure that we keep ourselves healthy so that we have, um, we, we, we can be used as instruments by God to bring about deliverance to others. Okay? So some points over here are quite practical in itself. And uh, we'll just go through some of it. So um, I think one of the important things is we, you know, when we're praying for people or when we're casting out demons in our, some of the methods that we use, okay? Um, and contrary to belief, you do not actually have to make a huge hue and cry to a demon as if he's deaf or as if it is deaf, right? Uh, the demon knows uh, when when you speak, it, it is able to understand the authority in what in which you stand more than your posture or your voice or the tone or the words or the, um, you know, anything that may be external. What is more defeating for the demons is the authority in which you stand and where from where comes that authority so uh, it is not needed like i mean there may be a lot of you know ministry videos that you've seen where there is a lot of screaming shouting a lot of noise but uh, just being quiet and calm yet being authoritative and firm is what you need to help to bring about some a control of that situation. And, uh, uh, and even as you do it with the authority that's there in your spirit because of what Jesus has done for you, uh, you know, you can you can keep your physical energy in place. Okay. Remember that demons are subject to uh, to the word of God. Uh, and it it is uh, one is the word of God, one is the finished work of the cross. So every time that uh, you know you're bringing about the finished work of the cross, it's a reminder, uh, or it's a it's a declaration, not a reminder. It's a declaration about what has been the state of the demons, a state of the evil of the world okay because it is only because of the cross and the authority that we have in the name of jesus in my name you shall cast out demons right so it is in his name when we stand in that firmness of that name and also so it's it's just not uh maybe the words that we use but the complete knowledge that we stand whatever we have or we are um, 
using it is in it is because of who we are in christ and it comes because of the spirit of god being within us so that is what the demons are subject to not us not our voice not our words not our abilities not the fierceness of how we look but we stand in the shadow in the umbrella of the power of god of we stand on the foundation of the word of god and of the finished work of the cross now that's the ticket okay that's the only thing so if that is something that goes missing we are we are going you know our ministry is going to be uh unfruitful so uh, so remembering that it is not how we uh deliver uh, uh de deliver deliverance that matters but the way uh, but for the fact that we stand in the position and in the authority of Christ of his work on the cross of the word of god his name and standing firm in understanding that are we are in christ and because we are in christ he has called us to do what he has also done okay so that is what the demons are subject to nothing to do with us as people we are instruments that god uses by his power so the more that we yield we give ourselves to the work of god and um come to a place of being under under what god has done for us you know we do see the power of god um, being released at uh, at at times of deliverances okay um so some of the questions that are probably asked is uh, you know um uh, and you may you may have seen certain deliverance videos where where a minister is making a conversation with the demon and they're asking about many things about details and and all of that so uh i think it's important to to understand that it is not necessarily not necessary to really bring about uh um, you know engage in a in a detailed conversation with the demon so that you can know what is happening okay it we when you when we are in a place where uh, uh, you know you're you're being in a place of a ministry where you are uh, in deliver, helping in deliverance one of the useful things to do is to maybe know the name and it's okay to know the name of the demon the reason being <clears throat> of no the reason or the or the benefit of that is you know which area which specific area in the uh, in the believer's life or in an individual's life is a place that has been uh, taken over okay one and you also are able to minister later after the deliverance on how they can guard themselves from not opening the door further again to that specific kind of a spirit okay uh like for example maybe if there is unforgiveness maybe it's a spirit of bitterness uh or or a like like that so you are able to identify what are some of those areas that uh um some of those areas that may need um you to help the person to to be careful and to be on guard so it does not you know you're not opening doors for another set of uh, uh havoc to happen so uh, the this the that's that's maybe why you engage in that conversation to understand the name so something that you know i've noticed that sometimes when ministers do engage the demon actually brings about a lot of details about the way that they have taken over a person's life and what they have done and uh, you know especially when it is a setting in a uh, when it is a setting among other other people uh, 
I, it is also being respectful to the person of not really finding other information, okay, which is really not relevant to it. And, um, you know, bringing it out in public, I think that may be absolutely unnecessary. Okay. But uh, just to know a few of those details, maybe the, the name, and I think that would probably be sufficient. In what is the what is the bigger solution to this is that to ensure that every area of our lives are clean <clears throat> and is under the authority of Christ and being able to stay on guard in these areas like for example areas where there may be bitterness or anger or uh, last, you know, we spoke about those those fleshly desires, where the self is there, where there's pride, where there's jealousy, where there is lust, um, or any of those, you know, fleshly desires. Being able to immediately come to a place of repentance and coming to to subjecting ourselves under the word, so that we don't do not open the door in any of these areas okay so that's that's uh, uh, that's what we we need to be able to take care of uh shri kumar i think you have a question would you like to yes, share pastor. yeah thank you pastor i want to know that um, as you said um, uh, that when you question the demons and uh, we have to know the name and all so uh, as it is written in john chapter 844 where it says that um, he was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth, for there is no truth. When he lies, he speaks his native language. So, how can, when a lie is his native language, and uh, when the lie is his native language, and uh, how we can come to the, uh, uh, how we can confirm that what the what the spirit is speaking is is true, because uh, his native language is lie itself. So how mm -hmm. we can how can we confirm that uh, what the spirit is saying is right or wrong? How we can confirm? That's my question. Thank you, Pastor. Okay. So so um, it's in John okay, eight yeah. John eight forty four. Yeah, I'm just looking at that. Which so you are of your father the devil, and the desires of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources, for he is a liar and the father of it. Okay. So remember when we are ministering, we are ministering through the power of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is the convictor of all of, of, of everything. And when when we are and, and as you minister, um, it is to be in a place of absolute communion with the Holy Spirit. So like you said, to be able to discern what is a lie and what is the truth is something you and I cannot humanly do. And it comes only from the power of the Holy Spirit keeping. Um, so I remember somebody saying this, um, you know, a minister of God saying this. When you're ministering to someone, you have one eye on them and one eye on the Holy Spirit. I mean, he was just, just you know, just to give us a good uh, uh, understanding of how that even as you are uh, and this this is in any any form like you know even if it's in counseling or if it's in deliverance and healing you have one eye on the person and one eye on the Holy Spirit to to bring about a revelation about what is going on over there right so so even for example maybe even people uh, uh, maybe are just lying, right? There, there may be a spirit of lies in them. Okay, some someone who's who who tends to deceive, right? So even as they're speaking, uh, because they've spoken it, a natural human tendency is to believe it. Okay, because they've said it. Because if, I mean, even in counseling or something, you're told to just hear it. But here, yes, when when you are talking about a spirit, you're also uh, you know you are. Uh, cognizant of the fact that even what may be may be told to you could be a lie and that's why we always always it is done under the power of the holy spirit it is not something that can be naturally um uh, done our dependence is on the holy spirit for us to know what whether even what the what the evil spirit is telling us is something that's the truth 
or it's a lie. Okay, so uh, to be able to discern that comes all discernment comes from the Spirit of God. So to pray and to, uh, you know, even as you're ministering to keep that focus, one on the person and one on the Holy Spirit so that, you know, he reveals a lot more of that to you. I think even when when you're ministering to people, um, uh, you, there, there are times that you you do have a strong uh, uh, indication in your spirit that, that the spirit wants you to bring about a message or say something, right? And that's the way, and that's why it is so important to uh, to keep our the eyes of our hearts and, and our spirits open to knowing how, how the Holy Spirit speaks to us or what is the voice, what is the guidance of the Holy Spirit. So the guidance of the Holy Spirit does not just... Um, is not just um, uh, confined to our day-to-day -day work, but it is absolutely confined even when we are ministering. So, uh, so that that is the key to be able to completely wait on and uh, have the guidance of the Holy Spirit as we minister. Because, like you said, it's absolutely crucial, right? Even when you are prophesying over somebody, or even when there is um, a word, uh, uh, a word of wisdom that goes in, or or a revelatory word that goes in. Uh, it has, it is something that is most effective and accurate when it is from the Holy Spirit, when we depend on the Holy Spirit. So it is a practice that we have right that we continue to have is to keeping the ears of our spirits open to understand, to know what the Holy Spirit is directing us to do. So it's not something which can be naturally, humanly done, but it is only that is a supernatural revelation to us to, to be able to discern those spirits. I hope I answered your question, Shri Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank right. you. Yeah. Okay. All right. Now, um, so, so when, uh, yeah, okay. So for, for those, um, for us, for, for, for all of us who are, um, uh, you know, working in, in this kind of a ministry and also something that's important for us to understand is, you know, as a minister, you may be walking in absolute faith and in boldness and in the authority of what Jesus has done for you as you are ministering to people. But for those who are receiving deliverance, um, they also need to be in a place where they want to be delivered, okay? And late and as a result also follow um, the, the important follow-up instructions of what needs to be done after there is a deliverance, okay? Because, uh, so, so there are many times that, uh, you know, yes, people have been delivered because of the kind of torment that they may be going through, they're willing for the deliverance, okay, and they desire to be delivered, but nevertheless, there isn't anything that happens as a follow-up. They, 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 they feel that once the, the spirit has left, then it will not return. But scripture shows us that, you know, if, uh, you know, if you don't keep the house clean, there will be, he will go back and bring another seven more devious than he is and enter into the home and, and uh, keep it occupied, right? So, the person who is being delivered needs to also have the desire to be set free and also come to a place of following those instructions of, you know, one is a repentance, okay, being able to renounce the work of the enemy in their lives, giving their hearts and their lives to the Lord and also doing, you know, those spiritual disciplines that are necessary to keep the house clean. Because God has given each one of us a will and a mind. And, uh, and as ministers, we do not push or we don't, do not exert the authority God has given us against somebody's will or somebody's choice. They need to determine for themselves they need to make the choice for themselves that they will come to a place of renouncing the work of the spirit, okay, repenting for it, 
uh, confessing the Lord as the savior of their lives and going and walking in that wholeness that they've received. Okay? So that's important for us to understand. What is it? That one, that um, the person being delivered needs to be, have a desire. Okay, There needs to be, uh, after the deliverance takes place, as a minister, we need to help them to maintain their homes clean. Okay, so, so whatever disciplines that's required, that spiritual discipline that's required to do that, because we know that it is their own will and their own choice, and we do not exert pressure or an authority over the, the person who's being delivered, their, their choices. Okay, so that's something that we need to understand. Now, what do we do um, when we have cast out uh, uh, demons? What do we do? Uh, and, and I think it's, it's, uh, it's best to not cast out dem demons into hell or the bottomless pit, because that's, that's for the Lord to do. And he will do that at his appointed time, at the time that, um, uh, th that God has set for um, you know for the enemy and for for his uh, cohorts to go if, like it says in um, um, mark chapter uh, 8 verse 20 then and i'll just i'll just read that to you um, I, sorry i think that's a, a wrong reference it is um, it's uh, okay. It's Matthew eight twenty nine. I think it's written as Mark eight twenty nine. Yeah, yeah. So it says, um, uh, "They cried out, saying, What have we to do with you, Jesus, you Son of God? Have you come here to torment us before time?'" So you see that that um, um, you know that's what they're asking, and so we. So there is a time that there there is a time that the Lord has set. That they will be sent out or you know cast into their place um, at the appointed time. Please, I'm sorry that the reference is written there wrong. It's Matthew 8, 29. Okay. And what is it that we are called to do? We are only called to cast the spirits out. And uh, it that that's all that we are asked. It's and, and scripture says that, you know, just casting out uh, casting out the demons, setting people free. And uh, where they will be sent is something that is appointed for God in His time, uh, and and whenever He He, uh, you know, at, at the end of end of time is when He's going to do it, and that will be His time. Okay. Um, uh, now the one of the biggest things we need to understand is that even when we're ministering, to know that um, every ministry, every any kind of ministry is something that is, um, well, you know, we do not look at healing ministry or deliverance ministry as a, you know, like how you have grades, like, you know, someone has done uh, bachelors and someone has done masters and someone's done PhD, you know, all those who do uh, deliverance ministry are all into PhD. It's not, it's not, a, it's not a sophisticated um, place, right? And it is something that, we are all called to do, and it is as important as any other ministry that you would do, whether it's encouraging, whether it's building somebody up, whether it's discipling, whether it is act of love, whether it is service, whether it's healing, whether it's the word of knowledge, whatever it may be, it is all uh, it is all the work of God to give him glory. So it is not something that, that is a class apart or, or a sophisticated uh, um, you know, league. Um, or of ministry. Okay, uh, remember that when when we are uh, the fact is, however, the fact is that when we're dealing with spirits, we're dealing with spirits that are absolutely number one. They are true. They are real. Okay, even if you don't believe it, the fact is that they are real and they are absolutely cunning. They are they are vicious. Okay, and uh, that's a, and and to beat that. We can, the only thing, the, the only armor that we have is the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God and what Christ has done on the cross. That is the only 
I call it, you know, when I call it tools, what I mean is that's the only standing and, and, and backing that we have. Okay. Uh, remember that, you know, a, a minister or a believer may know scripture right from Genesis to Revelation, but if they do not walk in the power of the Holy Spirit, there is absolutely no good um, in the way that they minister. It's a lot more of head knowledge, but what is it a demon is scared about a believer who's walking in authority, who's walking in faith, who's walking in who he knows he is in Christ. Okay. And to understand that this kind of a ministry often can be very exhausting. Um, and I've heard reports of how it can be exhausting when there are stubborn spirits, um, you know, who, who continue to stay on and you, you keep, keep bringing about uh, prayers for them. But it's important that you continue to do it because we are concerned about the person who is being oppressed or who is being possessed. You know, there is so much of bondage and it's almost like they are trapped and held um, in, in chains, cap uh, captured, captivated by the power of the enemy. And that is the motive that we have, the motive, uh, the, the love that Christ had for all those he... He uh, cast out demon, uh, cast out demons. I mean, the the reason why he cast out demons was because of his love for them. Okay, and, and that's what we continue also uh, to ensure that we do. Okay, so as ministers, uh, we 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 do what Jesus did because we believe in His name, and Scripture says that those who believe in His name, they're the ones who will cast out demons. So we are called. To do that, we are called to step out, to step in, uh, to do that. Okay, so um, I, I think it, it's also a form of, you know, uh, being and being in touch with people who actually do deliverance ministry to want to learn, to understand, to to know how uh, you know what really takes place in that. But in your regular a prayer with people, even as you minister to common people, you know, maybe the person sitting next to you doesn't look as if they are demon possessed. It doesn't appear as they're demon possessed or they are, uh, sorry, demon oppressed, right? It doesn't appear. But uh, when you keep your eyes open to the Holy Spirit and ask, you know, maybe wherever you're sitting, say, Holy Spirit, is there somebody that you want me to minister to today? And I think that's a good question to ask because the Holy Spirit will, will give you an answer to that and say, yeah, okay, there's this person there or, you know, the person sitting right next to you. Why don't you just get into a conversation? And often, uh, I think, I, and I've read this very often times and have experienced it myself, the Holy Spirit takes you step by step, one obedient step at a time. As you do one step, the next one will be opened. As you get into that, the next one will be opened. So you may not see the whole picture and say, okay, this is it, this, 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 you know, maybe like, like some people have um, had the revelation. For you, it may be one step at a time, but it is to walk in faith and walk in the trust that God is showing you, the Holy Spirit is showing you somebody, someone to minister to, and taking that step. Maybe it is uh, initially, I've, I've had this significant number of times where I've had a nudge saying, you know, just go talk to them. Just uh, uh, just give them a call or, uh, you know, just send this kind of a message. And I've always had people come back and say, you know, I there is a specific need that I've had and you reached out at the right time, right? And then, you know, continue asking the Holy Spirit, what is it that they they need? Give me give me wisdom, give me a knowledge uh, of, of understanding what is it that they require so that I could I could minister to them and they know that it is a supernatural work of God that is happening. And then you continue to, to minister to them. Okay? All right. Okay. Um, I'm, I've, I've completed uh, this as well. Uh, do you all have any other questions? And I'm trying my best to uh, answer uh, any, any questions that, we, that any of you may have. If not, I think we can, we'll, uh, 
uh, I just wanted to take some time to pray for at least for those of us who are on the call, as well as for our e-learning students. And uh, we can maybe wrap up earlier from class today. Pastor Kami. Yes, yes, Shri Kumar. Go ahead. Thank you. Uh, Pastor, uh, this is something which I noticed uh, several times that um, uh, you cast out the demon and from a person. Sometimes uh, they again manifest with the um, uh, in the same way. Is it the reason that they are carrying multiple demons in them, or uh, when I ministered them, I couldn't able to rec uh, recognize that uh, you know uh, uh, that there are multiple demons in that uh, person, or is it there is an open doors in his life that's why the same the spirit is coming back in his life or um, um yeah these are two things i just wanted to know thank you pastor so there are there can be multiple uh demons uh, that manifest right and um uh, again you know at what part of willingness is the person who is being delivered is willing to let go of some things. I remember um, uh, hearing a message from Chris Walton from Bethel AG Church, and he was talking about um, a, a, a woman who who uh, who was a, if I'm right, she she was a, um, she was she was a Satan worshipper. Yeah, she was a Satan worshipper. And uh, she was talking, uh, and she says she continuously hears directions from the devil. Continuously hears directions from the devil on one side, and she's also able to sense in the spirit something very opposite. Okay, so this is how she came to the uh, to Chris Walton, and I think that that uh, clipping is there on YouTube. You know, and if you can listen to it, it it's uh, quite interesting what he speaks. And and uh, she, as he is talking to her, the 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 demon is actually telling her, you know, telling her not to, um, you know, not to converse with him, or you know, she should be doing such and such, or you know, answer it this way. There is that kind of a um, communication that's happening now. Chris Valentin, uh, you know, tells her that you know this is this is what's happening, and it is it is necessary or it is it is um, it's something that she's subject to it, that she is under, and asks her about um, about uh, deliverance. And I think I'm I'm not too I, I don't remember the details very clearly, but uh, that's something that that she says uh, you know can he's asking if if there is any other way right or something like that she she's she said, so the fact is that you know the um, there can be multiple spirits that are there, and as you're ministering, if you continue seeing a manifestation you can be sure that it hasn't left or there may be multiple spirits that continue st to stay in operation and to go to keep praying for them okay or to go back to minister to them to a place of uh, till there is a, a complete renunciation a complete casting out okay and um, there are uh, there are times that you also have the person willing uh, you know if they are willing to renounce whatever work of the enemy or whatever spirit that continues to stay there so you can go to a place of telling them to renounce it that you know you they don't give the spirit any more permission to reside in them because there is the spirit of god that they are accepting so that's something that 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 you know you help the person to do that under the authority of christ when they uh, that that they 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 are renouncing every work of the evil one because of the spirit of god that they have received so that's something that you continue to do. but when you do see a manifestation you can suppose that it is it is a spirit that continues to be in there or there can be multiple spirits so you continue praying till there is a place of deliverance that happens. 
Thank, thank you, Pastor. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Is there anybody else with a question? Yes, Daisha. Hi, Pastor. Just um, follow up um, on the same topic we that Shirkumar just shared on. Um, we multiple. I've experienced that. I had my session last evening where i had a guest speaker that does deliverance is very perverse in it and he was able to identify that you know the young lady had she has a ministry but mm -hmm. i i saw that she had some level of demon uh she was i i had a a, a vision of a, a prophetic vision that she was tied up. I saw mm -hmm. where she was held captive in the spirit. The Holy Spirit showed me that, and mm -hmm. I, the Holy, through the Holy Spirit, I did deliverance on her. I just listened to the Holy mm -hmm. Spirit and instructed, mm -hmm. and I saw her throwing up. Right, mm -hmm. there's some things coming out, and so mm -hmm. that was one instance, but. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm not versed in deliverance, but I, I listened to the Holy Spirit and it was done. But there was more. There were more mm -hmm. demons. And last night she came on the, my program again and she started manifesting again. And then he asked her, how many are you? How many are mm -hmm. there? And he, and, 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 and he said, lesions. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, he said, I want to know, and he was talking to, I want to know how many are you? And mm. so the demon said, um, 10,000 uh, uh, there and uh, 10,000 or 6,000, something of that sort. And, but, and he said, who, who sent you? And he said, she was cast out already. Um, I they they left, but they came back. She invited us back because, mm. but it would have been something that she was doing. It was mm. the, it, they did some witchcraft. The demon said someone did it in mm. her bloodline. It was in her bloodline, but there was mm -hmm. something she was doing that opened the door because deliverance was done. But they said they got two weeks, so they went for more. They they went mm. for more. And um, so you listen to the, the conversation between the demon and her, and the demon was frightened because you realize the authority and the anointing, so they have to speak. It's as if they and they mm -hmm. said, "Don't don't send us." And he said, "I'm gonna send you right back to hell." And he said, they said, "No no no, send us in the cats because mm -hmm. you like cats. Send us in the cats." And they were having mm -hmm. this dialogue, but it reminded me of when Jesus was with um, Jesus was mm -hmm. yes with the demon, yeah. mm -hmm. and so I. He was he's very versed and mature has been doing it for years the um deliverance mm. ministry so mm. it, it you can and the authority that he speaks with right mm. um you i learned so much um seeing it face to face you know mm. like that mm. so while i am um i know some persons are scared they don't have nothing to do with that but mm -hmm. i'm not scared but i am you know learning as the holy spirit instructs me but I wouldn't say I am versed because he was able to pick up um, that there is several. There are several, mm. right? Mm. So, yeah. Uh, that, thank you, Taisha. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. I think that was so helpful, and that's that was helpful for us to also also hear that. That's why you know when, when to to really learn and to to know with the authority with which people walk is. Um, to um, accompany ministers who uh, who are versed in in healing and deliverance, and in that way also, there is a lot of learning that takes place. Yes, thank you, Tasha. Thank you. Okay. All right. I think we'll uh, just take some time. Um, uh, so what I'd like to do is just maybe have an extended, maybe ten or fifteen minutes, so we could. We could probably close uh, maybe around 11, uh, sorry, uh, maybe another 10, 15 minutes. So we won't have a break, but we can close and 
um, you know, we can keep, we'll just have this one hour uh, for prayer and uh, we can um, close the class uh, and terminate the session as well. So what I'd like to do is, um, uh, if the demons go in an animal, will they be will they be uh, will they become demonic okay, that's a good question but um but you you know i think for the reference that we have and can they transfer that to any human i think what we do see in scripture is when uh, jesus cast out the demons into the pigs yes they did they did go and um, you know they were they were they were very very chaotic. So I suppose from what we see in scripture that uh, there is definitely the presence of a spirit in them that they sense it and then they they go um, demonic. I suppose and can it be transferred to any human? Okay, I I'm actually. I do not, I'm not sure of this answer. Taisha, do you have any thoughts on this? Um, yes, Pastor. I would agree with you. They would go chaotic, just like the pig. Yeah. They went and yeah. they drowned. They, they, I don't think they could tolerate the, the pressure right. because if, if a demon, I experienced a young lady. She was about 16 or 15 at the time. I'm talking about, she made it about five, Five one or five two, slim built, very petite, and think about. I heard her screaming. The entire community heard her screaming, as if you were way over, maybe in between, uh, maybe a, a a a mile or two mile radius. You could hear her screaming mm. in torment, and you're like, "What is that?" As if somebody lit her a fire. And when mm. I got closer she a demon went in her or several demon because she was dealing with some spirits that were on him she was dealing with some sexual immorality of same sex issue and mm -hmm. and then they occupied that space to to go in her right so the mm -hmm. the, the torment of that young lady that child could not bear mm -hmm. those demon versus an animal right that is much smaller but um, mm -hmm. with that, I heard the, the, the prophet said, he's going to cast, the, the demon wanted to go in the cats. And he said, no, mm -hmm. you're, I'm going to mm -hmm. banish you to the dry desert and you're going to stay there until Jesus reigns, right? Mm -hmm. Until Jesus comes. Mm -hmm. That's what he says mm -hmm. um, to, mm -hmm. the, to the demon because he said, no, I'm not going to send you in the cats because pretty much a cat cannot tolerate that tolerate amount of it. torment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're good. As scripture talked about, um, we can see the reference in Matthew and, and I think the reference in Mark where the, the, mm. the swine, the pigs, they went pigs. and drowned, yeah. drowned themselves. Right. Yeah. 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 So, uh, Anita, to your question, can it be transferred back to a human? I'm sorry. I, uh, you know, that's a very interesting question. Uh, and um, maybe, you know, at some point of time, uh, maybe I can check with Pastor Ashish also and find out what that would be because I can't think of any kind of a reference in scripture whether that can be done. But uh, yeah, yeah. All right. Yes, Shay, I think you have a oh, question I, I, or I, observation. Yeah, the, just based on uh, the question again that can the demons be transferred to another person I, I think there has to be a basis um demons don't just possess people um demons don't, don't they can't just enter into anyone without a basis you know and right. most times there's always a covenant right that demons find entry into a, a human being uh so possession of a human being is not something that just happens without a covenant or that connects that devil or gives that devil mm -hmm. uh, that demon rather entry right. uh, but like we've learned most of the time people are demonized in other words they are influenced not necessarily possessed but just demonized and controlled you know by devils that can happen yes if you know certain things in that person's life 
you know, um, gives allowance for that, you know. For, for instance, if the person is preoccupied with illicit movies, you know, you're giving room for the enemy to control the mind of that person, of, of, that, of that person. Um, if you're engaged in things, you know, that are darkness in, in maybe occultic stuff and all that, you again, you're opening the door, you know, for control, right? But more importantly, for, for possession is usually um, as a result of a covenant that um, that that's uh, blood um, uh, that involves the blood shedding of blood, you know, or within that lineage, you know, basically more more. That's usually how, or you know, somebody committing themselves to a deity, their lives. But there's always blood involved, you know, for human possessions to happen by demons. That that's how just I try to answer that question. Yeah, yeah, I, I, that's that's true. That um, yeah, demons don't just you know are waiting to enter anybody anywhere, but there needs to be an open door, something that um, uh, opens an avenue for them to enter in because of something that a person or a believer or uh, is engaging in that opens the door. And I think that's what we we did learn that you know how how does uh, how does that happen is when we engage in things that is not of God, that brings us in enmity to God, is opening a door to the evil one. So thank you, Shay. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Uh, or they may get a job by black magicians instead of staying in an animal. Okay, so I think what you meant is that, that evil spirits... Uh, are sent by magicians or, or through black magic instead of in an animal. Is that what you said, Anita? Sorry, that's not very clear what you were trying no, to... No, ma'am, I was always... saying that uh, if they are there on the earth, they would have given some kind of assignment and they, that, that they need to be fulfilled only with the humans, I feel. Oh, so, okay. Oh, oh. Because black magicians okay. are already involved in the... like. Uh, mm -hmm calling upon the this pe demons mm -hmm. so maybe mm -hmm. they'll go they'll get attracted there and go there okay all right okay i am uh, you know um, this is not something i'm probably quite yeah, well versed with imagination <laughs> <now>. <laughs> okay. okay yeah all right okay um so what i'd want to do is i just want to quickly break us into um uh, some breakout rooms and I just like you all to pray for one another um, if you all are okay to personally share any specific points either for yourself or maybe somebody in your family um, or someone that you know um, uh, to be to you know for the wholeness for wholeness emotionally um, maybe it's a family member maybe it's for you if you are okay and if uh, it's not too uh, private to share you're more uh, you're welcome to share that and pray for one another what we are doing is just standing as a minister in the authority of the lord jesus and speaking wholeness and bringing about deliverance here within uh, ourselves and and among uh, ourselves also and Everyone in the group could also pray. One person in the group could also pray for our e-learning students. I know they're, they're unable to join us, but uh, one of your students, you could just decide for whom and decide who is going to just pray for the e-learning students who are listening in um, and uh, uh, just, just pray. You know, as the Spirit leads, just ask the Holy Spirit to open up um, your spirit to, to know, to, to probably bring about either a prophetic word or, or something that uh, someone may require healing. So uh, just depend on the Holy Spirit and for the next maybe we'll do it for around 10, 15 minutes and then we will come back to the main room, have a, have a, pr um, you know, have a closing prayer and we could close. So I'm going to uh, set up a breakout room. Uh, there'll be three rooms and each of you all would be in one room. So uh, you know, you could just pray for one another 
and take time to even pray for the e-learning students. I'm giving a 15-minute timer, so please be conscious of time. I'd like each of you to pray for one another. So ensure that no one is missed out uh, during this time. Okay, so just give me a minute. And I'll join in in, in, in the rooms um, just praying alongside with you. I won't be praying aloud, but I'll be, I'll be joining in alongside. <clears throat> You can accept the rooms that uh, you've been assigned to. Uh, Taisha, were you, are you able to accept a room that you? OK, everyone said.
Okay, I think everybody has joined in back. Um, I just want to close. Shay, is there anything that you'd like to ask or anything specific? It just crossed my mind. I, I, I know we still have, to, we still want to pray. I just wanted to ask, um, what is the follow up class to this course that we've been learning this semester? I noticed we've been building up from various courses. So, what's the next one that builds up after this one? So, um, in this is into the second year, the third year, there are um, further courses. Um, and I, I, I will probably really need to look that up as to what a buildup of inner wholeness may not be directly as a buildup, but there are um, other courses that are made available. And in the final year, it has a lot more of books. There's a lot more of book study that takes place. Um, and so that's, that's where it goes on. But specifically, okay. out of inner wholeness, maybe um, you know we come to an end here. But with book studies, you will have references being made to 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 a lot of the courses that you've done in the last two years. I see, Pastor. Thank you. Okay. All right. Yeah, I just like to close with a word of prayer. Thank you so much. Um, you know, I, I entered every room, and uh, I mean, I just sense the presence of the Holy Spirit as people were praying prophetically um, and just declaring over their lives. Uh, you know, each of us may be having our own challenges, but uh, we know that we are blood washed. We are we are guaranteed the power of the Holy Spirit. And as we pray in faith and as we stand on the work of the cross, we know that deliverance uh, is near freedom, liberty in the Lord Jesus is there. So I just want to pray together um, as well as um, for the e-learning students who may be watching, <clears throat> just want to bring up, uh, uh, just, just pray with each one of us. So let's just uh, close with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this journey, Lord. Lord, we thank you, God, that you are a faithful God, a God who wants to teach us, to show us greater things, Lord, more than we can ask or imagine, exceeding, exceedingly abundantly more than we can ask or imagine. You desire that each of us walk in the fullness of your love and fullness of your grace, Lord. Walk, Lord, in, in um, <clears throat> the way that you designed each one of us, Father. Lord, you desire that we tap in, God, to the power of the Holy Spirit, Lord, for our own lives, for the uh, on behalf of our family, in behalf of people, Lord, that we look to you for. Father, we just call your name here. We ask your presence to come mightily, Lord, at this time of prayer, as we all join our hands, Lord, we join our hearts, Lord, even through a medium such as this. I pray that the Holy Spirit reveals, God, the things that um, that you want cleansed, you want removed, you want completely set free, Father. Lord, I pray for those who are listening in, Lord, our e-learning students as well as our online students. Father, I pray specially for relationships in this, uh, in this call, Lord. Lord, for those that are broken through years of bitterness, years of anger, years of resentment father where past memories come flooding in lord and and steal the joy of the present situation lord steal the joy of present uh, relationships father i come against all of that in jesus name i pray god for the restoring power of jesus to just flood these homes father i pray that that there be a, a rebuilding lord right now and a reconciliation that will happen Lord, for relationships that have not been in communication for over months and weeks and years, Father, I break, Lord, every spirit of discord right now. And I pray that people will come today, Father, to restore these relationships. Lord, there will be phone calls that come today. Lord, that's asking for forgiveness. Lord, phone calls that are made, emails that are sent. Lord, visits that are made today that ask for a restoration 
restoration. And Holy Spirit, I pray, God, for a binding of hearts, Lord. I come against every spirit of discord, Lord, that takes away the peace of our homes, of our relationships, Lord, employer-employee relationships that's been strained because of, um, because of expectations, because of words that have been used. Father, I break the bondage of all of these, Lord. Lord, we come against, Lord, every attack of the enemy, Father, on health, Father. Lord, back pains, Lord. We pray for joint issues, God. Lord, broken uh, broken um, uh, uh, spirits and broken bones, Father. We just pray that you will you will uh, flood your your peace over people right now, Father. Lord, we we pray that that healing comes, Lord, in a mighty and and um, uh, and and uh, and a strong way, Father. Right now, Lord, I I pray against every. Um, a physical disorder, Father. We pray, I pray especially for autoimmune disorders. Lord, we, we command, Lord, the cells in the body to respond to the work of, of, of Jesus on the cross, that, that the cells would respond and work the way it should, not attacking itself, God. Lord, I pray and, and come against every, uh, every form of uh, brain issues, any developmental issues that, that children may be facing, God. I, I just ask that there be there be a reversal of every uh, autistic, every developmental delays that have happened, a reversal, Master, a reversal. And I pray for normalcy, God, that, that the brain function, Lord, be as you, you have designed it. Master God, we, uh, we just pray, God, for um, for matters that are of, of legal importance, Lord, people who may be fighting legal battles, God, where cases are being stuck in the court, Father, where, with, without any kind of a resolve, must God, I just pray, God, that you go forth, Master, and, and be the advocate, Lord, be the true advocate that brings about a release from these cases and these petitions that have been put forth, Father. Lord, I pray, God, for uh, for any legal matters that's, that people are struggling with right now, God, that your hand, Lord, will come forth in a mighty way. Father, I just uh, also pray for um, uh, for joints, for for joints of bones and and um, and and every kind of of, of bodily uh, function that seem tightened, that seem that, that where there is no flexibility. I pray in Jesus' name that you will lose out, Lord, all of these these tightened joints father or tightened muscles father i pray that the that every spirit of infirmity um, be cast out lord be cast out right now lord we renounce and we we send it away send it away and we just speak the authority of jesus right now father lord we just pray over uh, people going through rheumatoid arthritis right now father lord everything that seems so stiff and inflexible so rigid i pray for loosening right now in Jesus name by the power of the Holy Spirit Father Lord I pray God for those who may be who may have issues with stammering with issues of the tongue and issues of speech words not coming out Father not being able to articulate not being able to bring about the right kind of vocabulary Father loosen right now in Jesus name Father I pray for a plethora of of, uh, of right words and and skills and languages Lord to fill these these mouths father so that they can speak revelations god from you father a, a tongue that has been tied for over years be loosened and lord will speak the glory and the supernatural power of the holy spirit right now father lord i just i come to you father for for every member of this call who have aged parents who have elderly people father lord all those who have health related issues or um mind related issues lord issues with memory issues with judgment issues with stability with balance father i come against all of this in jesus name make them uh, agile and strong as caleb was in his 80th year father i pray god for a supernatural strength and power and healing 
Father, over these minds and over these bodies. Father, I pray for young teenagers, God, each family who have teens, Lord, represented in their homes, God. I speak the glorious name of Jesus over them. The struggles that they face, Father, Lord, the, uh, the multiple kinds of mixed messages that they hear from friends, from media, from entertainment, from, from, need, from the need to stand, uh, to fit in to, to a world, Father. I pray that these pressures will, will just be minimized. Or, oh, Father, that you will give them clarity, Lord. You will give them boldness to walk, God, in, in, the, right, um, in the right spirit, to walk, Lord, according to your word, Father. When they are, um, when they are given a smoke, when they're given, given a shot, when they are asked to do things, Lord, that, that stand against your principles, Father, may they have the boldness to stand strong for you, Father. And may they know that their reward comes from heaven, Father. Lord, we thank you. Thank you for hearing our prayer. Thank you that we stand in the authority of Jesus and by the blood of Jesus, by the cross, Lord, we stand in that, Father, and pray for a release over every physical infirmity, every emotional infirmity, every developmental infirmity, every social infirmity, every financial infirmity, and most of all, every spiritual bondage and infirmity. We cast, Lord, all of this away in Jesus name. We speak the blood of the lamb over us, Father. Make us ministers for you that will only glorify your name. Father, we pray that you will you will show us, Lord, each day to die to ourselves, God, so that we, we stand in the authority of Jesus. We stand, Lord, as those who have, have Christ in us, Lord, at all times. We live because Christ lives in us. Thank you, Father. We thank you. Thank you for empowering us, for equipping us, for teaching us, Lord, of you, God. Lord, I speak your blessing, God, over everyone under, Lord, uh, the authority of my voice, Father. I speak the blood of Jesus. I speak, Lord, your, your freedom, God. You have promised that it is finished, and we walk in that freedom. We walk in that wholeness. We walk in that deliverance. Make us strong ministers for you until the day you come or until the day that you call us, that none of us, Lord, will fall away on the wayside, but will stand, Lord. Our eyes, Lord, will be focused. Our vision will be straightened, Father, on you at all points of time. Thank you for this privilege. Thank you for this time of ministry. We ask all these things in the precious and the matchless and the powerful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And each of us say, Amen. 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 Thank you. Amen. 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 Thank you, ma'am. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. I was I was so privileged to to journey this these sessions with you. Y'all have taught me so much. You have really helped me, uh, really, you know, grow in my spirit as well. God bless each one of you. I pray that our paths cross sometime and we are able to meet each other in person. God bless each of you. Much love. Thank you so much. Thank you. God bless you, Pastor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, you ma'am. Thank God you bless. so God bless. very much. God bless. Pastor, I need a clarity. I need a I have a question. I just want yes. to go ahead. One of my friends might needed a counseling. So in that case, uh, how can I um you know um, give your number or mail email or something or office? address so that i can send him or i can refer your name okay so uh if you can just go to the uh okay let me do one thing i i'm, I'm just going to put out an email id here uh you can ask them to uh, just send us a mail on this sure sir. yeah there it is okay so you can just you. ask them to send a mail and we will reach out to him okay thank you thanks a lot all right Thank you. Uh, so the counseling either can happen online or in office. So it depends on the counselor who is who is able to take that uh, uh, take the call, Anita. So it can be either offline or online, whatever is possible. All right. Okay. God bless. Thank you all. God bless you all.